Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can extend the backdrop here and also make it smooth using the AI tools in Photoshop because if you were to do this manually, it's gonna take a long time. Now, before I talk more about this, just wanna quickly say that you will be able to find the link to download this image in the description of this video so that you can work along. Also, to use the AI tools, in particular, the generative fill tool that we will be using here, you will need to have the Photoshop CC or the Creative Cloud version, the real Photoshop. You can, If you don't have that, you can go for a seven-day free trial the link to that is in the description now let's get started so this is a fairly common situation in studio photography uh, especially with this 4 to 4.5 feet wide backdrop like this because anytime when you zoom out to take a full body shot uh, you start to see a lot of space outside the backdrop but it's still not a big problem because these backdrops are very popular because they're very light to carry they're usually smaller in size so if you know how to fix this this can save you some costs and also save you a lot of hassle when it comes to storage. So let's see how to do this. Now, if this backdrop didn't have this tonal variation, I can see some parts are bright, some parts are darker here, then it would be a very straightforward process because you can straight away use the content aware fill tool. But let me show you that that doesn't really work too well here. So what I can do just to show you that it doesn't work here is let's say I take one of the selection tools like the, uh, the lasso tool and let me just we need to just select the areas which need to be filled, okay? So the uh, external areas here. So we'll do the opposite because that's usually easier. We'll just select the inside area first in a rough manner, like this. And let's just close this. And then we can just go to select and invert this. So you can see here, now we need to fill this up so I can right click and go to content aware fill. And here we can just, it's a very simple tool. We just give the sampling data to Photoshop and it's basically going to try its best to fill up these areas. Right now you can see it's not doing a good job. We're getting a preview here simply because the sampling data provided here, which is being represented by this overlay is not correct, right? So what I can do is by default, you get this minus brush or sub the subtraction brush. And I can just tell Photoshop by running over things which it should not take in as the sampling data when it comes to filling up those spaces. So we are just removing that overlay from this and indirectly telling Photoshop that any part of the subject is not to be considered. We only want the sampling data to be from the backdrop. And that will immediately improve the look, but you can still see because it had so many tonal variations, it just doesn't blend in very, very well. It fills it up, but doesn't blend in. Now, one of the things you can do here in these scenarios is to use the color adaptation uh, tool here, which just means that if there is tonal variation, it tries as best to blend. So right now it's set to default, but we can try it at high. Sometimes it can produce a better result, but let's just wait for it. But you can still see we can, uh, it's not that great. And we can even go to very high and it is supposed to work, but sometimes it just doesn't blend in things very well. You can see, right, it's not too bad, but not too great either. What we'll do is, right now, let's just click on OK so that at least we have this on a separate layer and we'll be able to compare the results of uh, whatever we get here with the generative uh, fill tool that we are about to use. So you can see this is the first thing. We're gonna just hide this. We're gonna keep our selection active because we'll use the same selection here to use generative fill. So the contextual taskbar is already open here. Our selection is already there from last time. So we just need to hit generative fill and just hit generate because usually when you're just trying to fill up areas, you don't always have to even give a prompt. So I can just hit generate and let's see the results that this gives us. All right, let's wait for this. And you can see, right, this was literally almost a one-click process because we didn't even have to type anything, right? So this is a one-click method, which in my opinion just works much better than the content-aware tool. We even get three variations. Let's see if something has come which is slightly smooth in nature because the next part of this tutorial is, go is gonna be about making this smooth. So now that we have been able to extend it. So let's see all the three. And I think the first one uh, was the best or maybe the second one, let's just see. Okay, we'll stick to the first one. I think this is the smoothest, so the job will be easier. Also, if you just want to quickly compare it to what we got with Content Aware tool, you can see, right? 
it's definitely superior. So now we can delete this layer. One downside, however, of using generator fill to do this is that what you're seeing in front of you is basically a pixelated image. It's gonna be blurred. Wherever this was generated is gonna be blurred because generator fill, when it generates this image, it basically on the long side, it's a maximum of currently in uh, September 2024, it's a maximum of 1024 pixels, 1024 pixels on the long side, and which is a small area. So basically what it has done right now is it has generated these new parts, but it has just stretched them over to fill this entire area. So if I was to zoom in, like if I was to take the zoom tool and go here, this is going to be blurred, but in these cases it's not such a big problem because anyway it's a backdrop, so it's Anyway, going to be uniform. We're going to further make it more smooth. So here the resolution is not that important as would have been the case if this was an outdoor portrait with a lot of details of the background. Okay, so this is acceptable right now. Now we come to the next part, which is how do we make this smooth? So let's see that because we are again going to be using generative fill for that. Now, one of the things that you can do straight away is to just select the subject using one of the selection tools, inverse the selection, and then just when your background is selected, you know, just type in generator fill that make the backdrop smooth. But the problem with that is, since we're giving a full selection, it just gets all the liberty to sometimes makes sometimes make so many changes that it completely changes the look of the backdrop. So if there was a way to do the same thing, but kind of give it a softer selection, also called as a softer mask, rather than the black and white mask or the selection that we are used to seeing, then generator fill works slightly in a much more conservative manner. And that's what we want here because we don't want to change the backdrop. So how can we make that soft mask? Well, that's where one of the new tools can be used, which is the selection brush tool. So I've made an entire tutorial on it separately. You can check out the video, the link is on top. You can check it out later. But basically this, through this tool, wherever you paint like this, okay, that forms the selection. So if I, by default, usually when you use this tool, the opacity of the brush is set to uh, 100 and if I just with 100 opacity if I just paint this is nothing but the selection it's like taking a lasso tool and making a selection in fact if I change over to the lasso tool you can see that it turns into that marching and selection if I go back to the selection brush tool the only difference is this is an overlay but what we want to do is that we actually want don't want a full selection like we've just discussed we want to reduce the opacity of this brush so that it makes a softer mask so think of it like this in th terms of layer masking, not white or black, but we're talking about painting with gray, something close to that, okay? So at, at around 40%, what we can do is just start to paint most of the areas of the backdrop, okay? And be careful, of course, to not paint on the subject, but it's okay, even if, if a bit of it comes. The second th important thing is, since we're working with opacity, don't leave the mouse click when you're filling this up with the paint brush because the moment you leave your mouse click and if you were to paint accidentally again it will actually double the effect so it will go to like 80 percent opacity okay so just do it in one go like this so can you see like you're getting a very soft overlay that's because we are at 40 percent just try to cover most of that area of the background that's all okay don't go on the subject so something like this is fine. And you can see like still some of it came on the subject. So that's not a problem. What we can do is just go to the subtract option here and just make sure that we are not really painting around the subject, okay? Even if that happens and it distorts the subject, generative fill, we always get the mask. So it won't be uh, such a big problem, but I've just seen to keep these areas clear works much better. So now we've got a very soft selection here. Now we can just type in something in generative fill like make backdrop smooth and let's see the kind of results that we get from this all right let's wait for the results and you can see right yes we've got a bit of distortion on the subject but if you see it's really turned this whole background really smooth at the same time you know it's kept the shadows and all those things let's check the three variations just to see if you've got something better it's not going to happen that you're going to get completely an absolute smooth background that there's simply no way for that, okay? Uh, so I think either this one or this one. Yeah, I think this one is definitely better, the last one that we've got. Now, of course, it has come a bit on the selection. Uh, so we're gonna go to our mask, take our paint brush, make sure black is selected and just paint over these areas on the subject. Okay. So 
So that is good. Now that we have been able to go pretty much, let's just see the before and after. Right now, we've started off from this and this. And more importantly, if we just see the before and after of this, what we just done with that selection brush tool, you can see this makes it really smooth. Not all areas are smooth. Like I said, this is a very challenging image. Now, in order to further improve this image, now we can use one of the manual tools, uh, which is the patch tool, and we can just quickly patch up, sub, uh, patch up some of the area. So what we can do is, uh, because we have all these different layers, let's just again stamp it onto its own layer, using the earlier shortcut as before. And now if we take the patch tool, make sure the diffusion is set to five or even sometimes six, seven, that's fine. But basically when we start patching, the edges should not be seen. It should be, uh, it should blend in really well. And then wherever you are noticing, like still a bit of variation, you can just take that area, like for example, this, and then just patch it via, by dragging it onto the good area. And it'll just keep on at least, you know, reducing that to some extent. And you can keep on going more with this. So I'm just, right now, maybe this was the last one. And let's just quickly compare to this. Uh, right, so that this is what was before what we did. And now we've come to this part. So except for, yeah, some of, but I won't really consider this too bad because this is the shadow here. Okay, maybe these parts we can probably work a bit. Okay, yeah, but it's still, manageable, right? And now that we've got this, one of the things either you can stop here, but like I said, because generative fill produces something which is of low resolution. So if I was to zoom in, I mean, these are going to be really smooth things, which is okay for a backdrop. But if you just want to add a bit of realism to it, then what you can do is just use camera raw filter. And we want to do it slightly non destructively. So we can turn this into a smart object first. And we're just basically going to add a bit of noise. So we can go to filter, camera raw filter, because the subject is gonna have that natural noise, right? Whereas the backdrop is completely plain and it looks a bit blur. So we can go under effects here in camera raw and we can just add a bit of grain. So now if I zoom in, you can see like, i show you the before. This was before our subject already had those grains because the details are here, but this was looking too smooth, right? But now if you see the after, this kind of matches. The only thing is it has further added these grains onto our subject also, but that's not a problem. That's why we created a smart, Object. So now we get our own mask here for the filter that we just use camera raw filter. We can take black again and just on this layer mask, we can just reduce whatever we did on the subject. So those extra grains don't come on the subject since we already had grains there. And overall now, if we just slightly like zoom in, even if you were to take a printout of this, this would look real. And of course, anytime if you feel the grains need to be reduced, you can just double click here on camera raw filter and reduce or increase the grains. So it's completely non-destructive here. But currently, according to me, this is the best and the most automated way to achieve the result here and go and extend and make these backgrounds smooth. So let's just quickly check the before and after. You can see. I'm still in on the lookout for ways by which this can be done faster. I know of some AI tools like Evoto out there, which can do this with one click, but then those are paid tools. So I'm looking for ways by which this can be just done inside Photoshop. So in case I find something better, I'll definitely make an update video on this. I've got two resources for you before I close this video. If you are someone, you wanna learn the basics of Photoshop, I've got a completely free Photoshop course, which has 20 videos. You can check that out. The link will be given in the description. If you're really enthusiastic about the AI features inside Photoshop, like Generative Fill, I've got an entire course on that topic, which is a very long course. It's called Photoshop Generative AI Editing Masterclass. It's available by Udemy. This, the link to that also will be given in the description. I hope that you like this video. I'll see you in another one. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Bye for now.